you, you had a quote that said, as soon as I start forcing it, climbing, uh, as soon as I start forcing it, climbing when I'm not motivated, it ruins it. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I'm just, I, I, um, I guess my, I'm curious about um, what is the difference between being committed and showing perseverance, which you, you obviously are doing, and forcing it? And where do you know, how do you know when you've crossed that line? And, and what's the difference between those two for you? No, that's a great question. Um, I think I've made that comment in respect to how you set your goals and like what you're committing to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, reinvention's hard. You got to be like really selective about what you decide to do, what you mm-hmm. decide to commit to. After I did this one highball boulder called Ambrosia, I knew I was done with highball bouldering. I had mm-hmm. taken that and pushed it as far as I wanted to push it. So that was great, but I didn't know what I was going to do after that. And I didn't force it. You and you know, knew, but, I, but you knew that it was, you, you knew that that phase was done, at least for now, it needs to be put away. Yep. Well, I was sitting on top of the boulder. I hadn't even gotten down yet. And I knew that was it. You know? I had the same feeling when I, when I finished my last marathon, I was like, I think I'm good. I don't need to do this again. Yeah, exactly. Slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I did my best to not force it, you know, and that meant like six months of not knowing where I was going to take my climbing next until I also, saw this clip of the Don Wall. Also, that was also a key part of your identity too, right? At that point mm-hmm. in time, you were known as one of the world's best boulderers. And to be able to yeah. say, to be able to say, like, to step back from that identity, I think is is as hard as as any other piece of it. I would imagine. I I think so. You know, I spent so much of my climbing career up to that point, you know, committed to a particular craft, mm-hmm. and now it was time to um, go another direction. It's like starting a new relationship or starting a new job. I was like starting totally fresh. Um, I find it ironic that, you know, in your moments of peak success, you can, you can be, it can be a moment or a catalyst for starting all over again. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like you get to a, like a, where do you go from here kind of moment. And it almost requires that you, go back to the beginning and start all over, yep. you know, in that process of reinvention. And that's what my experience was going from bouldering to big walls. That was, that was all a trough of sorrow applies to that portion of the experience because How so? if, you've ever, if you've ever been through a reinvention of any kind, yeah. you know what an ego stomp it is, right? Oh. You used to be good at one thing. Now you're a total beginner again. You have to stay humble. Hopefully you have a good mentor and you have a long leash and you can be gentle on yourself enough to like slowly start to learn the trade, you know, and and apply whatever skills you had from before in a new way. Mm -hmm. I sucked at big wall free climbing for years. The big, the Don wall felt like so out of my league. And Mm -hmm. I don't think I could have done it any sooner than when we actually did do it. You know, uh, and it's not like you're starting on a like a, a, t- a tiny little training wheels version of a big of big wall climbing. You're literally starting on the hardest one. Yeah, that, I, I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, I think there are certain, uh, yeah. certain constructive takeaways from that climb, but I can't say that I would recommend um, starting on the hardest. But um, yeah, reinvention's hard, but so fulfilling. But coming back to where we started, it was, you know, being patient enough to wait and find something that I was so inspired by. And that's really the root of it. You know, I was inspired by the unknown. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this is this or is this not possible? That is just like a fascinating question. And I love that in other aspects of my life as well. I think the common thread, you know, in bouldering, I was doing first ascents, things that had never been done before. The Don sure. wall was a first ascent, you know, 
a lot of things, there's so much fun and like in the unknown and in creating things from scratch. Um, so I waited until I found something that stirred me in a really, you know, deep way that I knew that the, the pursuit of the question was almost more important than um, attaining the goal. Yep. And that's when I made the commitment to, you know, go that first season with Tommy and then, you know, come back again and again and again and again and again. And my relationship to that objective started, you know, to, to get stronger and stronger and stronger. But, you know, it's been five years since the Don Wall. Yeah. And I've climbed six years, you know, continue to, to climb full time and, and put up big wall first ascents, but nothing on that scale. Right. Yeah. And like in a lot of ways, this is a similar reinvention moment where like, what is that next thing in climbing in particular, that's going to be the, the next chapter, the same way that the Don wall was my next chapter after bouldering in the same way that bouldering was the next chapter after, you know, doing what I did with competitions. Um, and are you, do you, are you feel, how, and are you feeling drawn towards something? Or are you, are you in- finally? Yeah, finally. Um, here, let me show you a picture off my whiteboard. Sounds good. Okay, what are we looking at here? Where, this where is, is this? Baffin Island, Canada. Okay. And it's like Beautiful an overhanging L cap coming right out of the frozen ocean. It just looks totally fake. Yeah. Um, I've never been drawn to remote, cold, big wall, expedition style uh, objectives. But that photo did it for me. I was like, where and what is that? So I was going to go this summer to Baffin Island, but we have to push that to next year because of COVID. So instead, I'm going with uh, the same partner that I'm going to go to Baffin with. We're going to go to Eastern Greenland instead and go explore big wall first descents, you know, sail for 300 miles and then uh, go into some, some unexplored areas and, and try to put up some big wall free climbs that have never been done before. And I'm totally fired up. It's like a whole new, it's a whole new world. That's not my world, but my partner is like the most experienced. He's a, he's a Tommy, of this kind of expedition. And what's his name? Mike LeBecky. Everyone LeBecky. should look him up. He's amazing. He's amazing. Uh, like well, we're, most- we will look forward to uh, seeing all of that on 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 the gram as you uh, yeah. as you nail those. That's going to be amazing. Um, I want to talk about um, and and it's cool to. I think the the cool piece of that is to to for you to feel that sense of inspiration, like you know. It's the one that that you can't, you can't fake that part. Yes. You know, and when, when shit gets hard, that's when it's going to reveal itself. Mm. You know, if when shit hits the fan and when it's hard or it's been hard for a year or several years, like that's when you're going to know if you're really inspired by what you're trying to do or not, you know, and if that's not, if that's not authentic, you're not going to do it. You're just going to move on to something else. And maybe that's and the right thing, because maybe that's, is, you know, maybe that's what that's what you need in order to go find that thing that that does stir you in a way that you'll stop at nothing to do. But is inspiration for you uh, purely emotional? Is it intellectual? Is there a mix of both? Yeah, it's a mix of both for sure. Because mm-hmm. once I'm stirred, you know. This really like curiosity kicks in. Then I immediately start grinding on the how, you know, I'm like super analytical and love breaking stuff down and putting it back together again. And yeah, so it's, it's definitely both. And you're not always working on like, especially with climbing things full time all the time sure. around the calendar year. So you can afford to have like these really intense, you know, couple months or month and then some time away and come back.